I am Tanvi, moderator for this conference. Welcome to the conference call of Root Mobile Limited, arranged by Concept Investor Relations, to discuss its Q3 and nine months FY23 results. We have with us today Mr. Rajdeep Kumar Gupta, Managing Director and Group CEO, Mr. Gautam Badalia, Group Chief Strategy Officer and Chief Investor Relations Officer, and Mr. Suresh Jankar, Chief Financial Officer. At this moment, all participants are in listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. At that time, if you have a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve certain risks and uncertainties. Kindly refer to slide number two of the presentation for the detailed disclaimer. Please note, this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajdeep Kumar Gupta from Root Mobile Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, Anvi. Good evening, everyone, and wish you all a very happy new year. I want to thank the entire RML team for delivering a staggering performance quarter after quarter. We have yet again succeed, exceeded our expectation in, in the quarter gone by. It gives me great pride to highlight that we have surpassed our PIPO FY 2020 audited revenue of INR 9,563 million and adjusted PAT of INR 843 million in just this quarter of Q3 FY 2023. By clocking our best quarterly revenue of INR 9,857 million and adjusted pad of INR 1,010 million, this is despite the recent COVID issues, the Russia-Ukraine war, supply side issues, and current headwinds in various markets. Our focus approach, deep domain expertise, and most importantly, our modular approach of creating multiple levers of growth across multiple geographies have been the bedrock of our success. We continue to progress our progress significantly growth and quality deals wins all across the globe and including India. Some of the key highlights of Q2 FY since Q2 FY 23 are as follows. We won a couple of exclusive end-to-end -end deal with mobile network operators. RML is now exclusive partner for international A2P messaging for leading MNO in Sri Lanka as well as for Uganda Telecom Corporation in Uganda. While there is a lot of discussion about mobile network operators stepping into our domain, this deal will justify why Root Mobile is an indispensable uh, partner to the MNO. Further, there are various other unique opportunities with MNO that we are working on, and I'm confident that there will be more such partnerships that we will announce in days to come. In terms of our geographical expansion, Root Mobile strengthens its presence in GCC region with entry to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia with Citic license win. We formed a step-down subsidiary in Mexico as a part of our LATAM expansion strategy and step-down subsidiary in UK to focus on mobile identity and other products. Root Mobile has awarded the best governed company in listed segment emerging category at 22nd ICSI National Award for Excellence in Corporate Governance. Enterprises are increasing their adoption of new products and we continue to witness strong momentum. The worldwide growth of digital transactions carries a substantial increase in digital fraud, which presents a critical challenge for all these stakeholders. To address this issue, we are launching a mobile identity management product that will help enterprises to gain actionable insights and curb digital fraud and provide a simple yet more practical solution such as passwordless authentication. Our solution is already live in Colombia and Peru and is being used by marquee enterprise, including banks. For our email business, we have upgraded, upgraded our email infrastructure, which was delayed, but due to the hardware supply challenges, this new setup will enable us to bid large enterprises for email businesses. That includes bank. We are indeed very optimistic about our email play. Our senior management team has been doing a fantastic job during Root Mobile's superlative performance across multiple geographies. 
accelerate our next phase of growth and profitability to maintain our razor sharp focus there will be some realignment at the senior management level including hiring a few seasoned industry professional to drive dedicated svu we shall make relevant disclosures concerning these at the appropriate time last but not the least the board has decided to meet on january 26 to discuss the proposed interim dividend considering the superlative performance of the company in q3 fy23 with this gautam will walk you through the financial highlights in more details thank you what do you gautam thank you thank you rajiv <clears throat> good evening everyone wishing all a very happy new year 2023 we have already uploaded our quarterly earnings presentation on our website as well as on the stock exchange websites hope you had a chance to go through the presentation i'll quickly summarize our financial and operating performance during q3 fy23 and 9 months uh, fy23 before opening the floor for q and a at the backdrop of our best quarterly performance till date we have indeed demonstrated that we are one of the largest cpac companies and one of the most diversified players in the emerging markets if not the largest for the the undercurrents in the business continues to be very robust despite uh, the recessionary headwinds we will definitely surpass our fy23 revenue guidance of 60% by a margin the key takeaways from our financial performance in q3 fy23 uh, is the superlative growth we demonstrated yoy revenue growth of 75% and qoq revenue growth of 17% with focus on improving profitability we have done fairly well on both counts as highlighted in slide 18 of the presentation in fact as rajiv highlighted we have surpassed our pre ipo fy 20 revenue and adjusted pad in a single quarter that is q3 fy 23 in volume terms we processed 27.7 billion transactions which is the highest quarterly billable volumes processed by us till date in terms of geography india continues to be our largest market by termination accounting for over 45% of our revenue by termination you may refer to slide 6 and we are on track to surpass our guidance of us dollar 175 million dollars revenue from india in fy23 we continue to witness very strong momentum on the next generation products across multiple geographies we have demonstrated yoy growth i mean for the new products of 53% and qoq growth of 19% you may refer to slide 19 of the presentation with respect to certain one off costs bad debts amounting to inr 58.4 million were written off in q3 fy23 it relates to mr messaging's pre acquisition period the said amount shall be adjusted while computing the ebitda for uh, mr messaging for the purposes of calculating the deferred payouts for the shareholders of mr messaging there was also reversal of uh, esop expense to the tune of 82.5 million owing to resignation of some employees with this backdrop let me walk you through the financial performance in terms of q3 fy23 performance revenue from operations grew by 75% from 5628 million in ina terms in q3 fy22 to 9857 million in q3 fy23 there was a sequential growth of 16% rounded off to 17% group mobile's organic revenue growth excluding revenue from entities acquired during fy22 was 34% on a yoy basis and 17.2% on a sequential basis billable transactions increased from 16.3 billion in q3 fy22 and 26.9 billion in q2 fy23 to 27.7 billion in q3 fy23 average uh, realization per billable transactions increased from 31 paisa in q2 fy23 to 36 paisa in q3 fy23 gross profit margin expanded from 21.1% in q3 fy22 and 22.3% in q2 fy23 uh, to 22.4% in q3 fy23 adjusted ebitda grew by 66% uh, ebitda grew by 17% sequentially from 1094 million in uh, q2 fy23 to 1283 million in q3 fy23 ebitda margin was 13% in q3 fy23 as compared to 12.9% in q2 fy23 effective tax rate for the quarter was 17% adjusted profit after tax grew 63% on a yoy basis and 10% on a sequential basis adjusted tax margin was at 10.2% for 9 months uh, fy22 uh, 
sorry, nine months FY23, revenue from operations grew by 86% from 13760 million in nine months FY22 to 25606 million in nine months FY23. In terms of certain KPIs, for nine months, Root Mobile's organic revenue growth, excluding revenue from entities acquired during FY22, was 36% on a YOY basis. Billable transactions increased from 34 billion to 79 billion. Uh, in FY12, from uh, nine months FY22 to nine months FY23, average realization per bill in nine months FY23. We had a net revenue retention of 125%. You may refer to slide 16 of the earnings presentation. We added over 700 new customers uh, uh, in the nine months of FY23 across all products. Gross, margin, gross profit margin expanded from 20.9% in nine months of FY22 to 22.4% in nine months of FY23. EBITDA, mar, EBITDA grew by 72% from 1879 million in nine months of FY22 to 3237 million in nine months of FY23. In terms of operating leverage, EBITDA as a percentage of gross profit stood at 57%. EBITDA margin uh, was at 12.6% uh, in nine months FY23. Effective tax rate was 12.3% for nine months FY23. Adjusted profit per tax grew by 93% from 1450 million in nine months FY22 to 2803 million in nine months FY23. There was improvement in adjusted profit margin, uh, which uh, is to 10.9% in nine months FY23. We onboarded 66 new employees during Q3 FY23 and 61 employees left during the period. Net cash as on December 31st, 2022 was 7482 million as on December 31, uh, 2022. Operating cash flows for nine months FY23 uh, 23 was marginally negative owing to uh, some strategic business initiatives towards uh, a large firewall contract and discharge of a prior GST liability under uh, reverse charge mechanism. We believe the EBITDA to OCF conversion will start to trend 50% and above from Q1 FY24 onwards. With this, we open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Abhishek Bhandari from Nomura. Please go ahead. Mr. Pandari, we are not able to hear you. We request you to please repeat your question. Is it better now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Sorry for that. So let me start again. So I just wanted to you know, get your views on the you know growth outlook you know for the industry in medium term, as well as you know the competitive intensity. As some of the peers you know have been you know reporting fairly weakish revenue growth, though the you know volume growth is still on the 15 to 20 percent range. So maybe you know around the pricing, are you seeing a stabilization? And also, what do you think could be a medium-term growth outlook? And also to that, you know, what do you think is the uh, you know competitive uh, part? Uh, you know, especially from you know some of your peers in the CPAC itself, like Twilio, as well as you know the telecom companies who are trying to enter into this space. Let me say hi, here. Am I audible? Yes, sir. So I say, uh, I think first of all. I just want to clarify again, our entire growth is not just coming from one market. Our growth is coming from various different markets. And I think on a competitive side, I think there are four or five large uh, CPAS players all across the globe. And we are one of the top uh, tier one aggregator uh, as far as the ROCO report. I think our growth is coming from Latin America, Europe, Asia, and other markets, and Middle East as well. So for me, I think, uh, competition is definitely there in global market also, but we are fairly balanced uh, in Africa, Latin, and Asia, and Middle East. And I think almost all the top aggregator of the world, they use our connectivity in this market. And that is the reason you can see there is a huge growth, a quarter on quarter from last seven quarters, 
which we have reported. Gautam, if you want to add this to this. Yeah, sure. Hi, hi Abhishek. So, so from a growth perspective, I think, uh, uh, I mean, the, the good thing is uh, the organic uh, revenue growth. I mean, we've surpassed uh, the portfolio growth rate. I mean, that, that speaks volumes uh, about, I mean, our execution. Uh, and uh, from from the uh, robustness of the business at this point in time, from uh, I mean the, the month till date, uh, uh, the revenue run rate that we are clocking, I mean uh, we have not been kind of witnessing any slowdown whatsoever. And even for next year, we have good amount of visibility in terms of uh, uh, deals that we have won, the new volumes that will start to kind of kick in. And as Rajdeep highlighted, we have multiple engines of growth, multiple levers of growth across multiple geographies. We're very bullish about LATAM, and we believe uh, the LATAM uh, growth trajectory will uh, be, uh, uh, I mean, very strong, I mean, uh, in, in days to come. And we're investing in the right markets uh, over there. Uh, from a GCC standpoint, I mean, we've kind of now uh, enter deeply entrenched into a lot of uh, uh, adjoining markets beside UAE. And we believe a lot of uh, growth will start to come, I mean, from some of those markets like Saudi, uh, Kuwait, uh, and, uh, uh, I mean, India, I mean, we, we definitely, uh, uh, I mean, as we've always been highlighted, highlighting that we have been uh, late in terms of our India domestic entry strategy, but now we are kind of making our presence felt and uh, definitely taking a lot of uh, uh, market share from competition. Just to add, I would say, uh, I think our firewall product, uh, I know uh, the kind of deployment we are doing right now with various operators, there's one slide also uh, showing that. I think that particular uh, division is doing really good, and uh, we are in talks with multiple operators as we speak, and very soon we will announce some more uh, exclusive partnership. Got it, sir. Thank you. And, sir, you mentioned at the start, uh, you know, some kind of uh, leadership changes, uh, the new growth plan. If you could, you know, elaborate a bit more. I don't want specific names or something, but what is the new so, no, no. structure you're thinking about or is there any different, you know, go-to market you'll be thinking about from a new growth uh, paradigm? Because it looks like the growth is now more focused on outside India. Uh, so maybe you could elaborate on that. So Root Mobile is always, uh, I just mentioned, right, India is just one of the market for us. We operate from 22 market and every market where we are operating and we see a very solid growth over there. In terms of the leadership change, I think we are hiring some uh, top management, uh, especially to take care of our mobile identity uh, division. We are launching a product in Barcelona probably, which will be a very unique solution to, uh, to mitigate the risk of digital fraud. And that is exactly what I think most of the fintech company, most of the uh, you know, like banks are facing right now. So probably you can say Ruto by launching their first fintech solution uh, in month of February. And to lead that, we are definitely hiring somebody from industry who has multiple years of experience to lead this product. Got it, sir. Thank you and have a good 2023. Thank you very much, Ajay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manik Taneja from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. I hope I'm audible. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yeah. So first of all, congratulations for the good performance. I think I wanted your thoughts around the company. Uh, uh, so Manik, Man your voice is not very clear. Yes, if you're using your mm -hmm. headphones. Uh, yes, yes. Are you speaking to the handset now? We have lost the connection for Mr. Manik Taneja. We'll move to the next question from the line of Mohit Motwani from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I wanted to ask a uh, couple of questions. So, uh, first question was around the volumes, uh, which you know were flaggish quarter on quarter. So, there would have been some impact on some of the geographies. So, do you want to call out any geography where there was some more impact in the other geographies in terms of volumes? Mohit, uh, I think uh, you need to also understand. Let, let me just give you a small example. One single SMS, uh, international SMS terminating in Bangladesh has been charged 12 cents, and same uh, in Pakistan, 14 cents. Where, when you talk about India, ILDO messages are 4 cents. So I think it's a combination of uh, geography mix, you know, like in which month we have a higher traffic and what price. So one should not look at my numbers without, based on volume, based on the realization per transaction. You know, like as we speak, I think we are working very closely with another Sri Lankan operator where each SMS is going to be around 10 cents. Uh, sure. 
uh, that's helpful. And uh, can I you just like like just add to what just Rajiv said, right? So I mean, just to kind of give you a sense on volume right? So I mean, we'll also need to account for I mean, Diwali. While Diwali was in early October, but a lot of uh, the promotional spend, including some of the sell by large e-commerce companies, happened in Q2, right? Which traditionally happens in Q3. So to that extent, I mean, if you were to normalize it, I mean, there was a uh, volume growth that was there, and uh, there was also a large uh, ILD price increase that had happened in Q2, and some of that volume also had kind of shrunk because of, uh, uh, I mean, whatever was non-critical had shrunk owing to that. But but I think the large impact was because of Diwali being in early October, and hence uh, a lot of uh, volumes were there in Q2, uh, which was. Uh, I mean, which needs to be normalized. Yeah, over to you. And that's helpful. Uh, can you also uh, provide us the revenue from Mastery and MR Mastery for the quarter? Sorry, what do you want, Mohit? Which can repeat? Uh, can you uh, provide us the revenue for Mastery and MR Mastery for the quarter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, one second. Uh, so, uh, Mastery and the revenue was about. 601 million in INA terms. And for Mr. Messaging, it was 2031 million in INA, INA terms. Uh, sure, thank you. And for Messaging, you know, considering I understand that Messaging is, is one of the strongest quarters, uh, with Q4 of the calendar year is the strongest for Messaging. So, how was the year on year performance that you witnessed for Messaging uh, in the Q4 of the calendar year? And here you do. So, so, on a year on year basis, I think we are looking at uh, over a 20% uh, growth. Okay, and uh, just the last one from my side. Uh, what was the con uh, can you give us some color on the contribution of WhatsApp uh, in the new in your new product uh, revenue? Uh, not maybe a specific number, but some color on the contribution from WhatsApp. Mohit, we do report uh, our uh, new products revenue, and uh, it is a mix of uh, I mean not only WhatsApp, Viber, various other new products. So I mean we don't call out any each of these products separately. Okay, okay, that will do. Thank you for taking my questions. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is on the line of Tipesh Mehta from MK Global. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions. First about the, some of the industries which we report. If one do calculation, DFSI seems to be showing some mutedness on quarter on quarter revenue growth perspective. So if you can provide some sense about uh, industry specific commentary about how you see demand trend. Uh, and obviously, growth is materially moderated in BFSI compared to your uh, YOY trend in H1 compared to Q3, what we see. So if you can give some sense. Second question is about the exclusive arrangement or uh, deal which we announced for SMS firewall solution in Sri Lanka uh, with Sri Lanka Telco. Uh, whether the gross margin would be very uh, different than our enterprise business where we get roughly around 20% gross margin considering it is firewall deal or it would be largely operating like enterprise business if you can give some sense. And last question is about case generation. I think partly earlier Gautam alluded at about uh, weak uh, case generation. Uh, I am not clear about the negative or muted case generation which he said is for Q3 or for nine months. If you can clarify and how you expect it to play out for next few quarters. Thanks. Sure. So, so I'll address the second question about the firewall. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, margin. I think uh, uh, most of the firewall solutions are like a SaaS solution, and then we become a gateway for those operators. It's about 30 to 35 percent margin. It is uh, definitely much higher than uh, the, the traditional SME margin. Yeah, okay. you can take the next question. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Dipesh, uh, your query around uh, the the cash flows. I mean, so when uh, in in our, my commentary, it was uh, for nine months FY23. And uh, uh, this this uh, uh, year, essentially, I mean, Q3 and Q4 will have some degree of impact because of uh, the strategic business initiative for a, for for a couple of firewall deals. But uh, but from Q uh, from uh, FY24 onwards, it will result in high uh, uh, free cash conversion. Uh, so just wanted to kind of update you to I mean uh, about it. Uh, coming to your query on. Uh, your first query was around the BFSI, right? 
the volume here yeah. so bfsa revenue growth seems to be muted if i do the way you give nine months to so in- i think gautam i think we need to just uh, make it that clear uh, we didn't see any kind of the uh, growth in the bfsa uh, uh, you know like uh, volume uh, gautam if you can just answer yeah so i think in terms of financial services uh, you are uh, right uh, if you are comparing this with uh, so dipesh if you can just help me understand are you comparing it on a quarter on quarter basis or on a why uh, why basis so i am comparing both way qoq it is uh, muted so flat in why why also if i look your h1 growth uh, and now q3 why why growth h1 your growth used to be 75 percentage plus Uh, almost 80 percent is close kind of number now it is less than half of it so i just want to get some sense yeah so I, as i said uh, i think some degree of this growth was also attributable to uh, diwali being uh, early in the previous month uh, and and we serve a lot of critical traffic uh, uh, from our perspective so we are not seeing significant drop i think in terms of the transactional uh, uh, messages from yeah. the ssl standpoint so i think uh, the patient to also understand when we onboard a new customer all of a sudden that volume will be added for that particular quarter but after that that volume will be become a stable right for the next quarter or next month so there were certain banks we have added in last few quarters those volume has been added to for last year, maybe last quarter so but the same volume is going to be continue with this quarter also but there won't be that kind of a jump which has been in the last previous quarter yes, so broadly you are not seeing any demand pattern change across industries mm-hmm. because your retail if i look at it retail is showing significant weakness even uh, telecom and allied services the way we report is showing some different trend compared to like earlier trends so, but broadly you are indicating we are not seeing any pocket of weakness particularly on uh, industry side ecom also showing it look one look at qoq it is double digit down even yow it is down now so i just want to get that sense the across industries anything which you want to highlight i don't see as any there's any you know i think we always believe that i think we see lots of digital adoption happening all across the globe in all the markets where we operate you know like and we operate maximum in emerging uh, markets where we see the digital adoption ratios increasing day by day and we believe that this transaction is going to increase multifold in coming days and we are very bullish about our growth in coming days yes based on certain uh, firewall deal we may send this uh, 10 million traffic and we make uh, 1 million dollar revenue so instead of uh, sending 100 million and making 1 million dollar revenue so it all depends on market mix also uh, we need to consider that way so dipesh we also process a lot of uh, ild traffic i mean when it comes to financial services as well and because of the price increase as i said the non critical components of so the communication i mean that definitely had impact because the price increase was uh, significant uh, so so i mean uh, uh, it's not uh, only related to uh, i mean uh, domestic nld traffic it's a mix of nld and ild and on ild front uh, definitely there was some volume dip which had happened and that's largely because of the price increase understand last question in other industries any industry which is doing exceptionally well for us if you can call it out so we have that uh, already laid out in the presentation so digital native continues to be strong and uh, uh, we are kind of uh, uh, deepening our wallet share with most of these digital native companies Gautam, I am referring to the industries which you highlighted. The six industries outside of those industries is doing very well. So, if you can try people to highlight anything which is doing well outside of six industries, you put in fifty. No, no. So, as I said, digital native industry. I mean, that that continues to be as robust. I mean, even at at the size and scale that we are talking so about. So, depends. Depends. Just uh, let me give a perspective out here. You know, like to answer your question. As I said, if I am serving Google. for india i'm not serving google just for one country i have a potential of, of serving google for more than 100 country if i onboard one single ott player as a customer it is very simple for us to just provide a connectivity connectivity for the global market 
Okay, so OTT player and digital native customers, when they onboarded on our platform, we are serving from multiple countries, and that is the growth we see from last few quarters. Anderson, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manik Taneja from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity and apologies that I got discussed in the last time around. I had a few questions. First of all, with regards to uh, the CFO to EBITDA conversion that Gautam alluded to at the start of all the Indian's opening remarks, what we've seen is that our cash flow conversion has suffered materially over the course of the last three years. And and so essentially, how should we be thinking about cash flow going forward? Is there a structural reset in terms of the cash flow profile? That's question number one. The second question was with regards to the competitive intensity. Uh, in the last six months, we've seen uh, 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 telecom service provider becoming much more aggressive, especially when it came to some of the one of the large contracts. So, how, what are you seeing on the ground now? And the third question was with regards to uh, any potential price increase either on the NLD or the ILD side. Over the last couple of years, we've seen ILD pricing go up. Uh, in the past, you've alluded to even seeing a similar phenomenon happen on the NLD side. If you could help us understand what are you seeing on the ground. Thank you. You can answer the first question. Yeah, sure, sure. Hi, hi, Manik. So, Manik, just to kind of give you a perspective in terms of uh, the, uh, 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 the cash conversion, right? I mean, so over the last three years, we've seen structural changes in the industry. So, right uh, in the midst of COVID, uh, all the uh, traditional regional companies, uh, I mean, the business was massively impacted, and it was only the uh, uh, digital uh, savvy businesses, I mean, which continued to thrive. And for all most, uh, and for all these large digital technology companies, our receivable cycle happens to be uh, well within 30 days. I mean, so 30 days is the credit period. When uh, when the economy started to open up and all the regional traditional companies started to kind of uh, come back to normalcy, that's when uh, the working capital cycle started to uh, prolong a little bit because most of these regional companies, the payment cycles are a little longer than uh, the, most of the other digital native companies or large technology giant companies, right? So that actually led to some amount of uh, free cash getting stuck in terms of increased receivables. As we are kind of inching now towards a more stable, uh, stable environment where the change in uh, the working capital, I mean, will get normalized. Uh, as we move forward, the, it will lead to higher cash conversion going forward. But uh, the only caveat in this is this quarter and the next quarter, we have two large strategic business initiative deals I mean, from a firewall standpoint, which may warrant uh, some uh, working capital getting stuck. But from uh, FY24 onwards, the cash conversion will be far higher and should gradually trend towards northwards of 50% uh, from a conversion standpoint. Sure. So, Manik, on your question of competitive, in, uh, like uh, the landscape, uh, as I said, you know, like uh, for me, uh, we compete in the global market, uh, and I think opportunity for me is a very high when we talk about emerging market or. Uh, you know, develop market. I think we are operating and we are serving customers in all the markets. So I think there are very few people, uh, few companies uh, who are uh, in this space who are, you can say, top five CPAS players probably there. And I think we are a champion of emerging country. And as I said, uh, most of these uh, CPAS players, they use Google Mobile as a connectivity partner. And I think we see lots of growth coming from them uh, to Google Mobile. So I don't see there is any change in on term because it's more about the partnership model. We work with them rather than competing with them. Yeah, but there are certain markets, certain domestic players where we go, we do compete with them in certain markets. Uh, according to me, I think uh, we are fairly well placed and we don't see much of competition in global market uh, or the market where we uh, operate. So Rajiv, my question was more on the domestic market because over there we had seen one of the last years we get aggressive with one of the. No, I think I think I, I've already uh, you know like in my uh, first address I've already clearly mentioned that uh, we work very closely with operators you know and one operator coming and trying to disturb the market is not going to work at all you know like it's a very large market and I think uh, India the digital 
adoption and transactions are increasing day by day there is a huge market and there is a market for everyone we will treat them as a competition and the competition if there are 10 competition in indian market we will take them as a 11th one but the question is again you should have a dna of sikas player to serve the customer onboarding a banking customer takes almost 6 to 8 months and that is something the dna which we have built in or some of the sikas player has built over 7 8 uh, years or 10 years kind of thing for them uh, somebody uh, like to have a multiple uh, backup connectivity is also required there are so many things required in your platform to serve a large banking customer and i think probably they can win one or two uh, banks or customer but going and serving Uh, n number of customer on that scale is impossible for them honestly but again if there is a competition we are happy to compete with them and uh, uh, i don't think they are going to sustain with those pricing even they go and close multiple deals sure thank you for that detailed response yeah thank you thank you the next question is from the line of mohesh chandani from centrum broking please go ahead Yeah. Hi. Um. Good evening. Uh. My first question was on the revenue per transaction. Um. Uh, that's gone up significantly this quarter. So, is there anything specific driving that, or is it just because of a geographical mix change that's happened this quarter? Yeah. It, uh, hi. So, it is largely due to uh, the geographical mix. So, rest of the world, uh, uh, we've seen significant uh, increase, and ILD price was also increased for for the Indian markets. Okay, sure, understood. And uh, also, secondly, on uh, your ESOP program, so I understood that there was some reversal of charges this time around. But with your new employees coming in, do you expect higher than expected costs in your ESOP program going forward, or do you think that the current levels would sustain? So, in terms of the ESOP costs, yeah. So, I think uh, I already kind of uh, given that there was some rollback, uh, uh, and. Uh, Whenever I mean new employees will join, I mean ESOP is definitely an uh, employee engagement program from our perspective. I mean it is there to attract uh, uh, good employees, so it will be there. Uh, but but uh, the scale and uh, proportion of that may not be as high as uh, what it was uh, last year. Sure. And uh, lastly, on your uh, cash flow, uh, operating cash flow. Uh, so I understand that from FI 24, you would be at 50 percent plus operating uh, cash flow. But could you give some indication of what? Your OCF to EBITDA number will be for FY23. Uh, what sort of OCF to EBITDA percentage are we looking at? At you know, at the end of this year. Uh, so, I mean, the endeavor will definitely be to kind of uh, inch closer to 50%. Uh, okay. Sure. So around 50%. That's correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you would like to ask any questions, please enter star and one on your touchdown telephone. The next question is from the line of Amit Chandra from SGFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, and and no, thanks for the opportunity. So my you know, my question is on the uh, you know the partnerships that we have announced. so in terms of the a to p partnerships and the you know and the and the network firewall partnership that we are announced so what is the timeline in terms of revenue that we can expect and what is the revenue potential from these you know like partnership and deals and also in terms of the acquisitions that we have done you know if if you can uh, you know you know provide some more color in in terms of the performance of these individual entities so how they have been performing so i think uh... Amit Hai Rajdeep here. So revenue from this partnership, I think it will take about 10 weeks to deploy the entire firewall for this Sri Lankan operator, and we are looking forward to have uh, this revenue to be part of our uh, overall performance from uh, April onwards. Okay, and the and the earlier uh, announcement that we made, uh, you know, regarding. You know the Uganda Telecom and the you know firewall deal. Uh, the so other. Uganda is already Uganda is already live, and uh, we are already uh, I think uh, serving them now. So I think that is live. Okay. Okay. And on the acquisitions, sir. So if you can uh, provide some color on how the individual yeah. acquisitions are doing. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Amit. So I think uh, good thing is I think both Mercedian and uh, 
Mr. Messaging are doing uh, really well. I mean, when we onboarded Mr. Messaging, it was at a run rate of five and a half million dollars, uh, million euros a, a month. I mean, that has already trended up to almost seven point two, seven point three million euros. In fact, in December, uh, they've even outperformed that. Uh, but but December being being uh, kind of a seasonal month. Uh, so we we are I think fairly confident that I think that's already the business is already trending at 7.2 7.4 million euros a month, and in terms of Masivian, uh, I think we've done few investments uh, last year in terms of expanding the teams, uh, and uh, even uh, even even from a product uh, line expansion standpoint, I mean we are looking at. Uh, Creating uh, uh, a new product uh, out of uh, that team. I mean, in partnership with with the Indian technology folks. Uh, so at this point in time, I think we see we see Masivian. I mean, uh, continues to kind of uh, drive uh, almost a 20% plus growth rate. Uh, to also win a large five million dollar deal, uh, which is a multi geography deal, and that was cut see our presence across multiple geographies. So that is. Uh, on on their revenue scale, I mean, a significant contributor, and uh, uh, we are reasonably confident. I think Masivian, I think this year also, uh, I mean, in FY24 also, will be able to kind of clock uh, uh, growth rates northwards of 20%. Okay, and uh, you know, in terms of the you know strategy, uh, you know, in terms of the acquisition strategy, you know, since we have been aggressive on the acquisition side, so how do we see uh, you know in terms of deployment of the cash that we're having? So, are we planning some more acquisitions in some strategic areas, or we are planning to grow the business more organically from here on? So, I mean, let me just answer this question. You know, like as I said, uh, we are launching few products very soon, and I think this is in-house build. And probably, I, in terms of acquisition, uh, we are not looking out to acquire any large companies or invest heavily on that side. Right now, we are focusing more on how to integrate and create upsell and cross-sell opportunity within all the companies we acquired. And that is our focus for next few quarters, and I think we want to make sure all the integration and uh, upstream possible opportunity to be created well, and which we have seen a very good, uh, you know, like uh, traction between all this company where we started using each other's product, uh, you know, fairly well. As I said, the mobile identity product which we are launching is a you know brainchild of from Savian, and we both. A team from Bangalore, uh, the Root Lab, and the team from Columbia, they work together to build this product, which is a unique, very unique product and probably a product for the fintech market to be launched in India very soon. Okay. Uh, so I have one last question. So uh, no, we have seen that uh, no, there has been multiple price hikes on the ILD side. Okay. So you know, what is the thought process behind this uh, you know, massive price hikes by uh, telcos? And uh, is it, uh, you know, uh, you know, by indication of the fall in volumes, so uh, they are increasing the prices to, uh, you know, offset the, you know, fall in volumes that we are seeing. So Amit, I think if you see global market, you know, like yeah, I think that's a trend going on all across the globe now. Any international OTT brands transmitting all across the globe are paying higher price, and that is a very common trend. And India is still a very low price, if you say four cent, you know, as compared to uh, twelve cent or thirteen cent in Bangladesh or Pakistan. But uh, I think yes, it's a completely uh, prerogative of uh, operator to decide. And for us, it's just a pass through. And uh, operators really need to be, you know, like think logically before they increase pricing because if they really want to increase price, uh, they may lose some traffic. But uh, I don't think operators are going to increase price in India for next. At least for a few years, one year for sure, uh, because they have seen certain uh, degrowth in traffic, which uh, somehow uh, they are a little bit careful. This is my understanding. I might be wrong also, uh, but uh, on a domestic side, there are some discussion. People are talking about to increase pricing. I have no idea. Uh, we have not got any update from operator uh, as we speak, uh, and probably I don't think because enterprises are definitely spending a lot of money on this kind of communication and probably increasing price at this point of time won't work for operators. So I don't think there's any price going to happen in next one year for sure. But I might be wrong also. If, even if it happens, for me, it is just a pass through. Okay. Okay, so thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Chopra from Goldman Sachs Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. I hope I am audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Thanks. 
Yeah, thanks. Uh, my first question was actually on the cost side. Uh, if you could just explain uh, the costs below the purchase of SMSs. I think the employee costs this quarter went up from 39 crores to 47 crores, while there hasn't been any material change in the total number of employees. Uh, and even the uh, other operating expenses, which even after excluding that provision of 6 crores, I think that's gone up from 38, 39 crores to the similar number of 46, 47 crores as well. Uh, so if you could just clarify uh, the sure. jump in these two expenses. Sure, sure. Uh, so I think essentially uh, uh, the employee benefit costs, uh, uh, we need to kind of, uh, so I think uh, in this uh, uh, financial release, the employee benefit ease of expenses, I mean, that's been clubbed with the employee benefit expense, and hence uh, that cost uh, is uh, seemingly higher. Earlier it was a separate line item. Uh, Hope that clarifies, or you have something specific on that. No, uh, Gautam, I was actually talking about the employee expenses, excluding the ESOP charges, which would have been 38, 39 crores last quarter and is 47 crores this quarter. One, one second, one second. Ashish, just one second, huh? one second. Sure. Uh, so if you adjust the ESOP cost, right? I think the ESOP cost has not been adjusted. So if you adjust the ESOP cost for both the periods, the cost has actually reduced. Okay. Okay. Could you just share the employee expenses excluding yeah, we can, these? Yeah, we can share it uh, with you. Yeah, we can yeah. share that with you. And your second query was on other expenses. So other expenses, yeah. uh, if you adjust for the uh, bad debts, uh, I mean with respect to Mr. Messaging, there was increase in uh, the the data center cost because of uh, uh, the increase of uh, our global scale of operations. Plus, uh, uh, there were. Uh, some uh, employees where there was a commission structure, so there was increase in commission uh, with respect to the performance of some of the employees. Okay, okay. So, so the, would the second element be the non-recurring one among the two, and the data center costs continue going forward? Would that be the right? Yeah, data center costs will continue going forward, and the uh, other one will uh, uh, kind of uh, be a function of performance. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah, and and uh, uh, the other question I had was uh, so I think in, in terms of seasonality, uh, how should we think about uh, transitioning from 3Q to 4Q? Uh, we've seen uh, last time around when uh, there was a sharp drop, and that was on the back of maybe most of your businesses, especially the overseas ones, having a fairly strong uh, uh, finish to the calendar year. But uh, but is, is there a certain uh, kind of uh, defensible level of volumes below which you don't expect it to decline in the fourth quarter? Uh, particularly also considering the fact that the seasonality in the domestic side at least has been a little bit more muted this time around since some part of it already came in 2Q. Uh, hello. Yes, sir, we can hear you, management members. Yeah, yeah. Ashish, uh, if I can understand your query directly, are you kind of looking at what is uh, uh, the Q4 expected sort of a run rate? Yeah, just, just in terms of, I mean, if I were to compare uh, the 4Q for this year versus the last year, I wanted to understand should the seasonality be lesser of a factor considering that, uh, uh, you know, we, we've already not seen as strong a seasonality in December quarter this time around uh, in terms of volumes growth, as you mentioned that uh, some part of it had come in 2Q itself. That's correct. That's correct. So, but, but having said that, uh, uh, so Q4 uh, will be uh, slightly muted than Q3. Uh, and uh, that has actually been the trend uh, uh, historically as well. I mean, if you adjust for, I mean, uh, if you look at the uh, Q4, uh, 
had one month of uh, i think mr messaging's revenue if you adjust for that uh, it was slightly muted to q3 so it will continue to be a little muted uh, and uh, there was a, a specific operator deal i mean that we had for this quarter for the last quarter which was about 57 million dollars uh, and and uh, that that contract is due for kind of uh, bidding uh, this month uh, this quarter rather so adjusted for that i mean it will be slightly muted but uh, uh, i mean from from a full year perspective uh, the the uh, guidance will be northwards of 70% growth okay 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 understood now that's that's helpful uh, and uh, uh, gautam in in terms of just the attrition number so i think you mentioned around 61 employees leaving and 65 joining the organization this quarter right so uh, which i guess on your base is almost like 8 and 1/2 9% for the quarter uh, or on an annualized basis more like 35 36% uh, is that the normal uh, co- i mean is that part for the course with respect to the business or uh, is that something that is much higher than your comfort levels where should we think the comfort levels on attrition to be for your company you know, so uh, it is it is a mix of two things i think uh, it is definitely i think mid size i think it companies i mean they are also witnessing same kind of uh, attrition trajectory but in our case i mean there was certain some other aspect i mean so masivian i mean we were kind of uh, looking at building a lot of this product right so they have taken it to a level at the end uh, at a point in time we realized that we have to bring that i mean and globalize it from a uh, global uh, launch of that product so that's where i mean Uh, we had some amount of attrition uh, at Masivian, and uh, then we were able to kind of add it or pad it uh, uh, into our B- Bangalore, uh, uh, the center of excellence, right? So the intent was to kind of create a team and uh, create a, a kind of uh, a working uh, uh, technology relationship between Masivian and the India team, so that we could kind of look at launching the uh, uh, product. I mean, at a global scale. So a lot of Masivian's product stack is largely in Spanish. and the intent is i mean when we are looking at launching it across various markets the intent is to kind of globalize it and have it more in terms of english so that's where we've kind of uh, done a little bit of chop and change i mean between the two entities so that's also a large part of uh, this uh, uh, increase and then we were high we have high things here understood thanks and and one last bookkeeping one from me could you share the operating cash flow number for the uh, third quarter One one second. For the for the nine months, it's about uh, six crore positive. Sorry, six crores. Yes. Okay. Okay. And you mentioned that this may soften up in the fourth quarter, with given the fireball product sales. That correct. Understood. Got it. Thank, thanks so much for taking my questions. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohan Kumar, individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi team. Uh, congrats on a great set of numbers. Uh, most of my questions have been answered, but if I may ask something a little out of the box. So when you're speaking to uh, other funds around you, what is the biggest pushback you're getting um, with respect? to what what investors want to see or what the funds want to see with respect to company performance because uh if i look at the last few quarters the companies consistently performed really well when it comes to uh, whether it's the top line or bottom line but the stocks not done that great so i'm just trying to understand if there is uh, something that you're hearing from investors that uh, probably is uh, facing a few flags here or there so i think this is too wait one second i think gautam uh, you will answer uh, let me answer and then probably you can answer Sure. So honestly, we are getting great support from our investors, and uh, I think uh, we are getting the support in terms of their inputs on different products which we launch. We always discuss with them also. But I think uh, how the market is behaving is something Gautam can answer uh, your question. But definitely, we want to focus more on developing new products, and uh, try and we have the capability and uh, the team now, and our focus is definitely going to be build uh, something in house. and uh, for a global market which is exactly what we are building right now 
and uh, i think most of the investors they always try to see new things to build and i think which we are doing and definitely they want to grow they want to see the growth from where we are going to which markets we are going to focus on and how we are going to define a strategy for those market and what is our growth plan for those market and i think these are the few things which we keep on talking with them and i think we are getting great support from all our investors as of now gotham you can just uh, add to yeah, yeah sure and thanks thanks for asking this uh, query i mean honestly speaking we've been really really happy with with the way we've been performing over the last uh, uh, not only last three quarters but i mean last uh, i mean since we ipo and even before ipo i mean we were doing really exceptionally well and we continue to take the path uh honestly i mean uh, it's more than micro i mean it's got more to do with macro i think there are challenges in terms of uh, uh, what's happening i mean globally i mean in terms of the tech space there are uh, i mean some funds where where uh, uh, there are uh, uh, i mean uh, write downs because of their tech exposure and other things so that's leading to some amount of realignment in terms of their portfolio so some of these things have definitely be, uh, impacted i mean in terms of little bit of supply and other things but but hopefully i mean with things kind of moving uh, uh, uh i mean from a macro standpoint towards normalcy things would start to kind of and we should definitely start to get rewards in terms of 